Welcome to Dr. Kush's Exotic Drinks. I'm, of course, Dr. Kush, along with my bar back, Kyle. I'm not a real doctor, but I did spend almost two decades running some of LA's best bars. After years of teaching classes and training bartenders, I want to demystify the cocktail world for you. Let's try a few new things as I open up my bar to everybody. Belly up, chat, and let's have a drink. All right, everybody. Welcome to Dr. Kush's Exotic Drinks. Dr. Kush here. We are here today. We are going to be joined here in a minute by a very good friend of mine and a guy that is doing something very interesting, I think. And we're going to get deep into uh, Shane Sulk and all of the just the nuttiness that he is up to with uh, from his writing, his directing. But he is a he creates sound. He creates story in sound. And that's really what I want to talk to him about uh, today. Uh, he is the creator, uh, at least co-creator of We Are Alive podcast and Carcerum. I'm almost like I'm like 98% sure that I said it right. It's either Carcerum or Carcerum. He'll tell us in a second. Uh, and because of his very famous lineage, I have made a gargantuan mistake in what cocktail we're making tonight. We're gonna be making a penicillin and uh, I will explain to you exactly why that is not the right thing to do. Um, also, before we get too far into it, I do have a bit of a warning for everybody. I think this is an important thing that we talk about right up at the top. Uh, it's something that affects us all, and that is cyber security. All right, cyber security, how important it is that you are not getting phishing emails and all that kind of stuff. I was recently fished uh, by a guy that I thought was my friend. I got an email recently from a guy named Kyle Tender saying, don't forget that this Saturday is national take your bar back to Disneyland day. And I thought for a second and I said, well, that sounds about right. National take your bar back to, okay, well, I guess one of us is going to have to take Kyle to Disneyland. So, well, what happened? I had to do the show. So Jen, of course, took Kyle to Disneyland. Turns out there is no such thing as take your bar back to Disneyland day. And yet here are the two of them having all kinds of fun hanging out at Disneyland without me. Uh, this is them in front of the, uh, the big Ferris wheel. There is uh, Kyle. He's there just having a great time in front of that Ferris wheel. Here he is doing his duties, not for me, his boss, the person that gives him a place to stay, gives him purpose in his life. No, he is instead doing it for my producer, Jen. So producer Jen is not here tonight, and neither is Kyle, because, of course, I, like a gullible fool, fell for the oldest fishing trick in the book which is take your bar back to Disneyland day. So just FYI, guys, there is no such thing. If you have a bar back in your life and he is going to fish you, we need to stop this pandemic, this absolute epidemic, uh, this systematic failure that is fishing from our bar back. So uh, we won't have uh, producer Jen or Kyle here tonight, but we will have Shane Salk. Before we get into it, though, before we uh, invite Shane, let me uh, say hello to the people. Here is Shawnee P. Shawnee Panabaker, the bread man, is here representing the East Coast. East Side, they say. I believe that's what they say. I've always been a West Sider, so I don't know, but I think it's East Side. Hopefully I don't get shot for that. There is a Bootopia GE to you as well. Translation, good evening. All that is what I know about that. Uh, also, some more slang. Uh, here is our resident hula expert and wife of the Swabi of the SS Hot Lips. Here is Cocktail Lulu. I did think about that for a little. If you missed the show the other day, we learned a lot about Doug, and I have gained a whole new respect for him. What a guy! 
What an absolute beast of a man, a bear of a man, they say. Uh, DC Debbie Clark, winner of the 2023 Kushtucky Derby. Her time is running out on that. Hopefully in this last month, she is able to do some good things with that title. Uh, but it is running out. Uh, let's see. I think we saw, oh, here's uh, Jay Carter, party starter. He is here. He is ready. He has begun this whole thing. Tiki Tom is in the house. I did see that Moose was here a little bit ago. Maybe I'll find Moose here in a second. Uh, there's Amy Beer. Hello, Amy. Uh, here with my parents who are driving back to Phoenix tomorrow. Good luck. I hear it's lovely out there. In fact, I know it's lovely out there. I'm from there. Uh, where did Moose go? Come on, Moose. Where did you go? Uh, hi, Espen. Espen. Oh, there he is. Uh, yes, uh, we did see Espen was going to go to sleep earlier. Uh, we know that Espen, it's 3 a.m. for Espen right now. He, he sets an alarm to be here. So uh, we understand, Espen, if you can't make it. But uh, the moose is loose tonight, guys. Moose is loose. And moose is here, ready to go. Here is uh, uh, Paul. Yeah, Paul is he's uh, playing the brackets uh, right now. Uh, people are very excited about Disneyland and Jen and uh, who is the beautiful woman? My wife. Watch yourself. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, there's uh, Dougie G. Uh, Swabby of the SS Hot Lips is here. Oh, Jen is here having a blast with Kyle. That's great. I imagine uh, uh, Kyle is tall enough to ride all the rides. He did have a gargantuan growth spurt since the last time he was able to go to Disneyland. So uh, he is there. Jen will be here at least a little bit, uh, but not here uh, in person. Instead, here in spirits because of the fishing scheme that I got taken uh, advantage of by Kyle. Okay. Uh, hello to everybody. Let's get into this. Uh, coming up here right now, I have just uh, a really, I, I struggle sometimes with my guests. I'm able to like put them in a box. You know, uh, our friends, our, our friend uh, Cruz, right? He's a comedian. And he's a masseuse. That's what we talk to Cruz about. I mean, listen, the 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 Cruz talks can blow our minds sometimes, but we start there. It's more difficult with my next guest. This is Shane Salk, uh, who is a just about everything. So I'm going to have him sort of describe exactly what he does. Um, I want to talk to him about uh, some of his family stuff, and I also. Uh, just really am excited for you guys to meet him. So without much further ado, let me invite my very good friend. There is Shane Salk. Oh, let me put Shane Salk in his proper. No, there, Shane no you need to cancel the check. No, this bar back thing is a scam. I have just been told. Uh, uh, yeah, cancel the check. Bye. Hey. I hey. can't believe it. Did your bar back get you too, Shane? I think it was your bar back. I got this whole thing about if you can't take a bar back, to to Disneyland today, you have to donate, and I, I I'm a giver, and I yep. was taken for a ride. Yeah, honestly, as, as they are taking the rides, uh, as they are literally on rides right now. I'm really excited to see which rides they're going on. Uh, Kyle wearing that entire, you know, Kyle wears his uh, hazmat suit everywhere he goes. So I imagine that makes sense. He's having a tough time in Disneyland. Uh, let Disney, me just they may just want to start taking pictures with him. They'll just have a line start. They might think he's, he's uh, you know, in Monsters, Inc. or something. He's Quarantine Mouse. I think that that's, yeah, uh, that's one of the go. nice characters. Yeah. Um, yeah. Shane, it is, I've been, um, you, uh, so when I started this whole thing, I started doing interviews. I put together a big list of names that I wanted to have on my show. And you have always been very near the top of that. So I'm very, very excited to have you. Um, can I just, uh, can I tell you how I came to know of you? You can. Great. You feel like free to, so, to, to talk. I'm just going to stand over here. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I feel like this is a, this is a, uh, this is important, I think for, uh, to put you in context for, um, uh, for my people. So, um, you created a, uh, a podcast. So we, do we call it a podcast? We are live. Do we call it a podcast? I mean, I always call it, yes, it's a podcast. Technically, yeah. uh, I always talk about it as, as an audio series or an audio, right, an audio series. Yeah. yeah. It's a zombie series. You literally created uh, how many episodes of that? 32 episodes of Carcerum. How many episodes of, uh, of this? Well, uh, we're live had just in the first season had uh, 30. Yeah. Six, I think. I don't know, yeah. 12 times three, whatever that is. 
36. Yeah, right around 36. So basically, yeah. uh, my wife, who was just getting into voiceover when this thing was coming out, or, you know, she, I guess she was becoming sort of serious with it, uh, started listening to it. And she was like, this guy, Shane Salt, is like making the coolest stuff. We were way into zombie. You know, my wife and I got engaged in the middle of a zombie run at, at, at Petco Park at, uh, at Comic-Con. We were big <laughs> huge zombie fans and suddenly somebody that's like like in a group that's sort of like connected with you know she knew she knew bill holmes one of your partners uh so like this guy that was like connected with us has now created this like epic this absolute masterpiece of a of like media about zombies with all voiceover people and literally Shane Salk, the name echoed through our hallowed homes for a while. <laughs> we were just like, I was just, the, the whole time like, like who even has that kind of time to put that thing together? Who has that kind of uh, patience? Who has that kind of talent to like take all this stuff and slam it into a really well packaged and very interesting audio series and then i can answer that I'm for not, you yeah, lonely honestly, people. very very lonely people that's who has <laughs> well, that who has who can do that shane yeah i mean listen maybe that's a little bit of it but then i met you and you and i have become i i would say would you say good friends i would say good friends. i would say I mean, great honestly, friends. i would say great friends uh since then and i all often have to remind myself that you were the shane sulk that we like talked about like you were you were like this like pseudo celebrity for us for a minute because we didn't know of you so like we didn't know you so right. we were it was so interesting um can you tell my people uh so i've told them what i think you do will mm -hmm. you tell everybody what you do like what's your day look like oh god so i wake like, up what's your month look like yeah oh my month okay so the yeah. first of the month i usually uh reevaluate everything i've done with my life smart um and then there's like an hour of crying um and then i walk my dog and everything's fine uh so i at the moment i'm i an actor and i got into the voiceover game as well i run a recording studio up in north hollywood california um what is that he's asking um so so we i i took over this recording studio space because um we were uh, I had been trying to pitch to people and get funding for an audio drama called Carcerum, which you got right the first time. That was great. Carcerum. Pronunciation. Carcerum. Carcerum. Great. Um, which is a, a, a fantasy. So it's more like Lord of the Ring meets Princess Bride. Uh, right. Full cast, about 120 actors in it, I think, something like that. Big names. Um, Jane Lynch, Cameron Crowe is in that. Yeah. Neil Flynn. Um, Neil Flynn. Three or four different Ninja Turtles. We got Pinky in the Brain, Maurice LaMarche, right. Rob Paulson, Bob Bergen, who's Porky Pig. We got uh, um, Scott Porter, who was in Friday Night Lights. So we got a lot of really cool people in it. Um, so we took over this, I took over the studio to, I got a little bit of funding to write and start producing it. We took over the studio because it was cheaper and it became available. It was cheaper, I thought, to rent out the studio, try to make money renting the studio while we were producing uh, Car Serum. Um, and then, so that's what I've been doing. I've been running the studio. I've been, uh, I, I write, I have a couple of feature scripts that are, are being passed around right now. Uh, I was the head writer of Car Serum. Um, and uh, I did all the sound design. Um, Tim McEwen, who's an amazing sound designer and mixer, did all the mixing and mastering. Um, and and you know added sound effects where they needed to be um but i i i started learning how to do so many different things in terms of uh you know editing pro tools running the studio all about sound because of my love of acting and creating and i was just in a place where i was so tired of having to wait or find other people to do things for me and then if they took a long time and then i didn't like it we'd have to go back in and i had to re-edit so i got to this place where i was like i didn't have money to to hire the you know people to do these things or and i didn't want to take advantage of people i didn't want to beg be, uh, beg borrow steal people who have incredible talent um until it got to a place that i couldn't do it myself so um, that's why I started to learn how to do all of these different things because of my love of just creating and acting. Uh, and, uh, you know, 
it's it's served me very well. You know, live streaming, do live game shows over the pandemic, um, which are uh, a but, you ton know, of fun. Where so so uh, uh, where do we find the game shows? Because I, so I, are... I have been a guest on the game show. Yes, you have. And I think yes, Jen I has have... too, right? Jen has too. Jen uh, famously yeah. did oh, really that's badly. Right. Yeah, did yeah. very, very badly. Yeah, Jen very. did not understand how the game went. She was playing. I mean, it's a very uh, complicated game. Tic-tac-toe tic -tac -toe. is not <laughs> an easy game. Uh, I mean. Yeah. It's a, uh, it was a, uh, a phenomenal uh, just like a like a phenomenal, uh, lovely failure of her. Yeah, and it's then very I, silly. Uh, so that's uh, that's tic tac toe. You guys call it something else, though. You guys call it that uh, one is North Hollywood Cubes. North Hollywood Cubes instead of Hollywood Squares, right? Yes. It uh, no, then, I mean it has nothing to do with that. It's a completely different than that. Um, my bad. No, no relation. Yeah. Um, um, it's like and then I was you know, on a game. We got ours called... off a wish. <laughs> you guys are the alibaba version of it exactly I was on a, exactly i was on a game called um uh, oh sorry jen is butting in she's saying okay now <laughs> we don't make me go quickly find that episode uh <laughs> producer jen. <laughs> it's to be to be fair i just yeah i think that she, yeah i mean listen it is it's did, not in if her you, defense, it is very weird and it's very overwhelming yeah. to be on these shows. <laughs> it really is. It really, really is. Um, I was on a game show called I Hope the Answer that you have is, on your card. Is the answer on your card the same as the answer that I wrote on my card? Right, yes, which is a long name for a game show. There has to be a cheap or a, a, a more economical way to put that. But uh, I remember I lost on that game show uh, because our good friend Ian – um uh the, the question to me was oh god uh, something happened what uh -oh. happened have you disappeared i thought maybe you just walked away well while you figure that out oh i see him coming back there he is oh well either way uh so while he's figuring that out uh basically what happens i had a good friend named ian uh it's sort of like the uh the the match game or what, what what's the the game where they uh where you uh, relate to the match game very, yeah not related to the match game uh the question was uh, tarzan and his wife are having some marital issues and they want to spice things up uh they're gonna try blank and of course the answer that i put on was swinging swinging through the vines i thought that was um the way to go and our friend ian uh thinking he was being very cute wrote have sex with other people <laughs> which <laughs> let me just say is technically what i was talking about but i lost and the other part of that is while i was doing that shane i had full-blown covid like yeah you did like like sweating, dying, co like at the beginning of COVID. I just had full blown. So uh, anyway, uh, those game shows are a lot of fun. And you produce those. Yeah. With produce and direct friend. those. Yeah. Cool. Bill Holmes. Um, he's he's our Bill Holmes. Yeah, yeah. on camera yeah. talent and producer. And... Yeah. Um, just a lot of silliness. Just a lot of silliness. Just a lot of silliness. Now, um, I want to get us a drink in our hands. Um, uh, so that would help. Have... Yeah, I think so. Um, no, I gotta, now, I gotta tell you, Kush. Um, I so these things were were lovely gifts to me by yeah. wonderful, wonderful people. I have never used them. Yeah. So um, this is the only one that I've used. Yeah, and people uh, have been. I'm commenting. not usually a allowed to have them. Yeah. But um, who's counting? Uh, people are commenting on uh, the the uh, seriousness of your knife. They have called you Crocodile Dundee. At this point, or maybe they're talking to Mark, but uh, UF Mark, but uh, yeah, definitely lemon knife, lemon knife is uh, trending in our chat right now. Uh, I, people are very interested in your knife. Well, I um, uh, I was really good at Fruit Ninja back in the day, Great. so I feel like this is going to go really well. I think so. Um, but I was told to get a big knife because we might yeah. use it to to squeeze a lemon or something. I don't know. That is exactly. I did tell you that exact same thing. Um, let me. Uh, so, uh, uh, Shane, your name is Shane Salk. You are the great grandson of Jonah Salk. Just grandson. Not Just that grandson. Good. Jonah Salk, the the creator of the polio vaccine, is your grandfather. He's like he's yep. Papa. Did you call him anything like? Was it was there Papa? Was it just like Grandpa Salk or what? Like what? Yeah, Grandpa Salk. Uh, and the yeah. the family secret that I will tell you. Please don't spread this around. When nobody's but, watching. 
Nobody's watching. But um, it was really my idea, and I got no credit for it. Sure. So it's a little sensitive um, to talk about. But it was, I was the the one who came up with the idea for the polio vaccine. That's great. Honestly, yeah. uh, that is, uh, I mean, years before your time, too. So that is, uh, that's something else. You know, it's, um, it's, 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 yeah. Wise before uh, my years. Um. Uh, I feel like Jonas Salk is a character in in our like in our history that we don't I mean, know much about. Like he's just not he, like we don't know. I don't like I don't know his temperament. Um, I, like, can you give us any insight into? He, he was he was fairly short. He was short okay. from what I remember. Um, I would I, a lot of people don't know who he is, and I think that's fine people of an older generation than us get like sure. weirded out when people don't know but i kind of describe him as like our generation's fauci like sure if if you run into somebody with the name fauci you're gonna be like wait are you related to dr fauci you know right because right. of all the stuff um yeah so yeah he was i he was a great grandfather i liked him uh yeah. he he um uh, it, during grand, uh, grandparents day, I grew up in Seattle. He lived in San Diego. But every okay. grandparents day, growing up, he would send a fax to the school, and they'd come and find me on the playground and read the fax. He'd be like, "Oh, I'm sorry, I can't be there." He was great. Um, so that's a, you know, I I liked him. I was a huge fan. Yeah, you know? it's just so I like it's just so odd to have a, you know, a man that saved. Uh, hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of lives, just like as as Papa, you know, as yeah. like as Grandpa. I mean, that's just such I mean, an it, it. You know, it really he wasn't that. I remember going to his 80th birthday party, um, and they had a big thing at you know at the the institute where he worked and everything, um, and I I mean I you know he died when I was ten, I think. Okay. Um, but his 80th birthday, I remember going to this thing and trying to push people out of the way. Cause like, why you're, he's my grandfather. Get the, uh, you know, out of the way, you know, that kind of thing. So he yeah, wasn't. Yeah. 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 It was oh, more I, bothersome. <laughs> interesting. Wow. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. Now, did you, did you attend the funeral? Um, I, I, I attended memorials. I was very scared of the funeral. Interesting. Yeah, I, I didn't want to go. Um, there was a number of reasons that, uh, you know, I, I was just I was young. I wasn't that young, but I was young and I was just yeah. I was very scared of the funeral. I was scared of of, you know, the crying and, and all the stuff. And I, I was right, just right. didn't want to go. But I went there was a party afterward and stuff. Um, it was sure. just, a, you know, it was something I was going through. But yeah. uh, there wasn't cameras or anything like that. It wasn't it wasn't that kind of situation. Yeah. I'll be very honest. Uh, the the most surprisingly uh, the most surprising thing is that he lived in San Diego. Uh, I feel like San Diego is nothing but like uh, surfer bros and like brewers, and that's what that's who lives in San Diego. And then I just imagine Jonah Salk, the inventor of the polio vaccine, is also like there in board shorts. And like yeah. he's got his tank top on, he's like on his way to the beach, and he stops he, off for a, for a double IPA. Is that yeah uh, anything like that? Yeah. Um. Uh, well, he did the research in uh, in Pennsylvania, right? In in like Pitts, uh, Pittsburgh, I think. Um. And then they moved there, but they, there's a Salk Institute down there, so they started that. He moved there. Um. And one of the cool things is that so his my grandfather uh, grandmother was one of the funniest women ever she died when i was in high school but jonas's second wife um was was an artist and he always had this love of art and so the salk institute was actually kind of a mix between science and art and the the architecture and stuff but they did a lot of art stuff too so i always thought that was really cool um yeah. so i i don't know if he ever went surfing um you don't know but if he didn't. But yeah, a lot of short sure people did, were probably bored in lectures learning about him. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, any uh, uh, growing up, any interest in going into sciences at all, or you've you've been kind of the art kid your whole life? So my entire family are all scientists. They're all okay. scientists. Uh, like 
you know, my grandfather, his two brothers, one was a vet, one was a psychologist. My father, his two brothers were all in the sciences. My brothers has a PhD and an MD and invented a way to find DNA sequencing that's like a billion times more efficient than it was. Um, the only time I ever remember as a kid thinking I should go into being a doctor was when I saw my father's handwriting and thought to myself, oh, I should do this because my handwriting is terrible. <laughs> so I was like, oh, doctors have terrible handwriting. I could yeah. do this. Yeah, that, was, honestly, that was about the last time I ever had an interest. One of the prerequisites. Well, uh, Shane, um, I, for some reason, just mixed the whole thing up. Of course, there is no cocktail called the polio vaccine. That would be a crazy thing oh my to God. name uh, how, a cocktail. How... How uh, is your your audience in like inappropriate dark jokes? Because I, if, if how are they with that? I well, because we, I say we try it. I mean, any 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 drink can be the polio um, if you just drink enough so you can't feel your legs. Like that is my feeling on that. I'm not happy with myself. <laughs> I don't like that. This is what my brain does. <laughs> Honestly, there have been, I have had, um, I have had nights that I've drank enough that I probably belong in an iron long right after. So I do believe that maybe, <laughs> maybe I, yeah, maybe honestly, maybe they are all uh, polio vaccines, but yeah. uh, anyway, we're going to do something else. Uh, another, <laughs> another modern invention that is in the scientific realm. Uh, we're going to be making a cocktail called the penicillin. Uh, this is a cocktail created by one of my very good friends. He and I have taken one picture together. Uh, a guy named Sam Ross coming out of New York, an attaboy. Um, I was able to actually have this drink with him uh, recently. And I did ask him the questions that I needed to ask about which whiskeys we're supposed to be using for it. And he uh, very generously did tell me. Uh, and so what we're about to make here... Shane is an actual Sam Ross penicillin. Um, and that's what we have in front of us. So uh, go ahead, grab your uh, shaker. There you go. Put it right in front of you. We're going to be making this whole thing in the shaker, except for the last step, uh, which is uh, going to be a float. And people, uh, I'll just do it right now. It's a floater. It's a floater. We got a floater coming up. So um, we're going to start. I love sound effects. Me too. I have. I just have lots of Give them. Give me your biggest, strongest, cheapest drink. We uh, right here. Uh, this is the whiskey we're using. This is Hedonism by the Compass Box Scotch. Uh, uh, it's a Compass Box uh, Whiskey Co. It's a blended grain scotch. This is the scotch that he uses. He uses Hedonism by Compass Box. And in the more clear small bottle that you have there, that's what we're looking for. So yeah, that one right there, the uh, the the taller one. There's You have a short one and a tall one. And yeah. A, or is it like, yeah, less filled, bit more filled. Yeah, um, one that's a little bit more like urine colored. Gotcha. Yes, a little, yeah, touch more urine colored. Yes, a little more. Pink a healthy color. urine. Um, I mean, this one could be urine, but you should see a doctor. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Um, this is hedonism. We're going to go ahead and put in an ounce and a half of some uh, of some of this compass box. Is is this thing? Tell me an ounce. Is that what this is for? Uh, yeah. It, yeah. So that's a jigger right there. Yeah. So inside, Shane, you should have some lines, some like tick marks in there. So that's that's called a bell jigger. And on oh. the inside, you should see little lines, and you should also have some indications of where it is on the big side of that. Uh, that's called the the uh, the jigger side. The other side is called the pony side. You Got should it. see one line below the top that goes all the way through, and that's going to be an ounce and a half. Got it. Got it. I don't, so we're just going to guess. Oh, just guess. Honestly, what you have right there is two ounces, so oh, go pretty, okay. pretty close to the top. So we need uh, an ounce and a half. Of some uh, some blended scotch. So I'm so, okay. I'm just gonna drink part of it because I filled the whole thing. Hold on. Absolutely. Mm. Uh, people are uh, people are very concerned that uh, this is an expensive whiskey. This is kind of an expensive whiskey for a blended whiskey, but as far as uh, I... as far as this goes, it's a great place to use it. 
I'm a little concerned now because I just drank the. Um, I don't know if you can make that better. Are we going to make that oh, better? Because that's really good. Yes, absolutely. A, a compass box wow. does great stuff. But uh, yeah, we're going to make, I mean, a penicillin is about uh, as good as it gets. So uh, wow. we have that off here to the side. Um, oh, you don't have a uh, thing. Okay. Um, what? 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 I can get it. I can do I've it. I've set you up. I've set you up uh, so that you're ready to go. Um for those of you that are watching at home and aren't going to be juicing your own ginger, this is oh. ginger juice. You have honey ginger already, uh, Shane. Mm -hmm. So I've already mixed yours. Uh, this is ginger juice. Basically, I've just taken uh, a bit of ginger. I've sent it through a masticating juicer. The other way to do that is to just take a couple slices of ginger, put it into the cocktail now, and really like muddle the crap out of it so that you get all of that muddle. But then you're going to need to do a double strain. Shane? Yes. You don't have to do any of that. I've set you nice. up so that you are good there. Uh, we're going to start instead over here with our lemon. So grab a, uh, a lemon. We're going to slice it in half this way. So take your nubbins, slice it in half here. And then the reason, Shane, I asked you to get such a huge knife is in order to keep the lemons, the lemon seeds out of here, uh, you want to you want to start your lemon outside of the uh, outside of what you're doing, and you want to squeeze so not on the knife side, on the on the the flat side, the dull side. Well, that wanna, makes way more. Yeah, sense. yeah. You want to just squeeze that so that nice and slow, so that the lemon juice will drip oh down the knife. There's no way this if, is gonna work. If a, I promise you, it works, and it's so cool when it does. Just nice and slow, though. That way, if the um, if, if a seed drops out, it will drop straight down and not see that just happened with me and not into your cocktail. So it's a good way to keep seeds out of your cocktail and to direct all of that lemon to exactly where it needs to be. I oh, I got one in there. That's all right. Shane showing his knife, his ninja skills with that knife. People are very impressed with your uh, knife skills, and uh, Dougie G very impressed with your uh, drinking skills. A little life hack we all just learned there. If you're doing it right, just overfill your jigger and then just drink the rest. Yeah, and I think you should be good. Yeah. Am you're I doing both? There? Both halves? No, no, just one half should be about. That should be about uh, three quarters of an ounce. Okay. So I gave you uh, I gave you a, a good size lemon there. Okay, yeah. so we have that in here. Next thing we're gonna be putting in here for most of us is going to be some runny honey. That is two parts honey and one part water, just to give us a little bit of um, of some motion, some movement, so that it flows a little better. Uh, go ahead and put in half an ounce of some runny honey. Shane, you have ginger honey all ready to go so you can put in three quarters of an ounce of ginger honey the three quarters on your bell jigger is going to be the other side and that's one ounce so just a little short on Great. that side why wouldn't i have just okay i could have just done one ounce and then half of it on the other thing um that okay is true so, yeah so that is true three. i suppose yeah okay boom now mm. you know what that smells like I, ginger and honey that? that's amazing that, oh, yeah. dang you have what what kind of nose do you have on you you like a bloodhound you really can you can pick up all the sensory you know, you go to psalm school or something i i went to uh dom school and dom it school. was let me tell you it was not what i was expecting <laughs> great great i love that um uh, next thing, I just want to say, Shane, you said I went to Dom school, and right as you said it, we got an influx of about eight people watching. Uh, so there are about eight people right now in the chat that started watching. Right as you said, I went to Dom school. Yeah. So there's a there's a few people in chat right now that have no idea what the heck you're talking about, and I love it. And we're not going to touch it. At, or at all. do they know what I'm talking about? Maybe that's why they joined. Find me on Instagram. Uh, <laughs> Shane, is it Shane Salt Productions on Instagram? I don't know. It's Shane the Dom. It's Shane. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's just Shane Salk. I was like, 
every all of my social media handles are just my name, Shane Salk, because frankly, good way to find who you. wants to try that hard? Yeah, exactly. Uh, this guy's for those of you that are watching at home. This is just ginger uh, juice. Um, I used to make this drink the way I thought it was supposed to be made, with which is with ginger syrup, because I make a very nice ginger syrup. The problem with it is, is that just ends up making the drink too sweet. The bitter element should come from ginger. So if you're not going to muddle your ginger, it is important that you just do some ginger juice. Be very careful. This stuff will cure whatever ails you and also kill anything inside of your body uh, that uh, maybe you want or don't want. It's very, very uh, spicy. Mm. So you need a quarter ounce of some ginger juice, just straight juice ginger, or uh, just a touch of some ginger syrup if that's the way you're doing it. And you here's, a, very... here's a life hack for you. Yeah, if hey. you have the ginger honey and you just squeeze, put some on a lemon, it's really good. I, I imagine that is. Yeah, uh, I we were um, I made enough ginger honey yesterday that uh, Jen and I have been making it, and Kyle uh, have been making it on toast. We've just been putting it right on toast. I I assume that that's what they packed when they left me today uh, for take your bar back to uh, Disneyland. Day. So Shane, we're gonna shake this guy now. Okay, with uh, anything when, else? What's that? Just these things no. together, not with ice. Just those it. things together. Yeah, just those things. Oh, no, no, sorry. Yes, you need ice, Shane. That's what I'm sorry. Yes, oh. you need to put the ice in here. How much? So that's a great question, Shane. And my Thanks. audience probably collectively giggled to themselves. Shane, a lot of ice. You need a lot of ice. So get as much ice into your uh, into this as you can leave yourself just enough though so that you have uh, some ice for your drink afterwards or you know what we'll do shane we'll pump and dump can't why don't just, we pump and dump okay. yeah can't you just use the same ice it's like absolutely is that not a thing? yeah i think that'll be just fine i am gonna start an ice ball real quick it's like cooking meat in the stuff that you use to cook the onions beforehand you reuse the ice when you shake it. Uh, yes, yes. Hey. I, uh, you're. Oh, you're saying like, oh, it's like, uh, like taking the onion and like after you've made uh, bacon like, or you like, something. Yeah, or you saute the onion in butter and then you take it and put that to the side and then you cook the meat in the same butter right. and then you have the like, you know, the same flavors and all that stuff. Or, or making the meat and then sauteing the onions in the meat. That's what it's more like. Yeah, and the meat juices that. that are still there. I. I are make there a lot really of people that watch this show? There are. As a fact, as wow. matter of fact, there are lots of people this that watch this show. This can't be good for my career. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're going to – honestly, I feel an uptick coming yeah. uh, for Shane Salt Productions. Uh, okay, Shane, we're going to shake this one. Make sure that you uh, have this nice and tight on here. Uh, make sure okay. that you you have a you have a Parisian uh, shaker or a, a, a tulip shaker. Yes. Oh, uh, right. Bon Bon is yelling, yes, dang it. People watch this show. Okay, uh, so go ahead, uh, Shane. With two hands, right? Make sure it's nice and squeezed. Hold anything that can possibly fall off. This is how we're going to do it. All right, so uh, first of all, angle your body this way. You you look like you're about to break it. Uh, yeah, there we go. Now we, so, we're, okay, if I do it this way, we're like the Charlie's Angels. This is great. Exactly, yeah. If I just lean back like this, it looks like, yeah. yeah. There we go. Oh, yeah, look at us. Uh, you want to go back and forth. However, Shane... You also want to go up and down like a teeter totter. So it's like this. I'm just going to watch you for a second. I'm gonna I feel you. like I should be singing Baba Lou. I think you should. Baba Lou. Baba Lou. Is your, hey, is, Lucy. Is, is your shaker as cold as mine? Yes, as a matter of fact, Shane. However, oh. eventually, after many, many years of bartending, uh, you get what we call asbestos hands, and it no longer, it no longer feels. You don't you don't feel anything really, uh, emotions or uh, any kind of just anything. You just get to, you get numb to all of it. This is why actors and bartenders get along so well. This is exactly right. We've all learned that uh, we will get we're going to get yelled at at some point. We are very sensitive. Now, how, are you getting are you able to get that open? Yes, I got it. Okay, perfect. Does it screw? Yeah. If I have you do literally, it right. <laughs> I, yeah. Yes, it's a screw. It's it feels like very Egyptian. It's very heavy. This is like made out of like rock or metal. 
and this is a screw top and it's so like i feel like the pharaohs use this kind of thing i imagine when the pharaohs made their uh their famous new york sours yeah that probably that was a big drink back then the new york sour they didn't know what it was going to be you know maybe they made maybe they got the idea to name the 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 the, 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 the um you know the medicine penicillin after the drink that the pharaohs used to drink the penicillin yeah they they were like oh we're drinking this penicillin oh this makes us feel great oh you know we should name this like medicine penicillin because it makes us feel good that right. could be i think that it ha honestly shane it has to be that's yeah. the only way it possibly could be someone uh, call okay. the discovery channel <laughs> uh you do that i'm not okay. gonna do that okay uh shane you got a you got a, a glass there Perfect. yes uh, we are going to strain this cocktail into our. Let's get this out here. We're going to strain our cocktail into our glass. So you have what is known there as a julep strainer. Technically, yeah. a julep strainer, Shane, is not meant to be used for a shaken oh. cocktail. Well, this but has I, holes in the lid. That, and that's exactly what we're going to do, Shane. We're going to use that. You know what, though, uh, Shane? Since what? you don't have any extra ice, you're going to do a method. And this is a this is an old-timey uh, bartender method. It's I, I really don't want to give this away to too many people, but I'll give it to you. It's called okay. the pump and dump. And all Got you're going to do is take everything in here and pour it right into your glass. Oh. There you I'm go. Not, I'm Look not straining it. No, no straining. So oh, yeah. that way you're uh, you're reusing the ice. How in I God's name did you know it would be exactly to fill the cup? Like exact? Like there's nothing else in here, and go and it didn't overflow or anything. I I'm just like, spilled everything. Yours? Um, <laughs> yeah, I wasn't. I was paying attention to you there, Shane. And I wasn't paying attention to. Usually, me. when people pay attention to me, they screw something. up. Well, you know that's that's uh, that might be your superpower. Pull this up. I'm gonna side. I'm gonna have some more lemon, just in my mouth. Yeah. While you're uh, yeah, while you're doing that, yeah. Honestly, Shane, um, uh, really, in the end, uh, that was you. That was you choosing exactly how much ice to go in there. Uh, mm. People are concerned. Can't believe in 45 minutes we're just pouring a drink. That is true. Yeah, we did. Shane and I uh, talked it's a lot. It's been 45 little... minutes. Shane, wow. time goes by so fast here. Uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and throw this in here. It's not completely done, but I think it's going to be okay. We're going to throw our ice ball into our cocktail right there. And the last little bit, Shane, is an important part of this cocktail. We are going to give this thing what we call... It's a floater. It's a floater. We're going to give this thing a floater. A lot of people will float uh, this thing with a... Um, uh, with a, uh, what do you, like an atomizer. They'll take some scotch. Let me see which scotch we're using today. Uh, another kind of expensive one, but, uh, oh, it's right here. We're going to be using Lagavulin the eight year. Lagavulin is a different style of scotch than the one you have in front of you, uh, or the one that's in your drink. Uh, this yeah. is called an Isla Scotch. It's it's spelled I S L A, and uh, so find that little find that little uh, uh, bottle, the little like the one that has the least amount of stuff. Yeah, got it. And give that a big smell, and I want to hear. I want you to. I want your initial reaction on that scotch. That was definitely the ginger. No, I'm joking. Oh, um, <laughs> that would have been funny. Uh, no, that's it. Smells smooth. It it smells. It's not like. It's it it's it's not as like uh, fragrant of like overwhelming like I'm about to like bite into a tree, sure. As some scotch like peaty, you know. It, so it makes, this that should be me... one of the peatier scotches. The lot oh, of had... the Isla. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, it's not it's not a it's not a peat bomb, but it is an Isla yeah. scotch. No, it it yeah. it it makes. It makes me, uh, I would go to sleep to this smell. That's a great, now I just feel like I'm doing a blow in the 70s out of a fucking <laughs> Honestly, out of that gargantuan vial. It looks good. Yeah. It looks good. And the paneling behind I like you, it. I think, uh, it completes the look. Yeah. Okay, uh, Shane, we're going to take the back of our spoon here. Okay, I have or, sorry, two spoons. Sorry. Does it matter? Uh, the bigger one. Find the bigger one. You, the bigger, the longer one or the like no, fatter no. one? 
The fatter one. The one Got with it. more spoon area. The whichever one of those, Shane, you would eat cereal with. Like the the, the closest one you would eat cereal with. Yeah, well, unfortunately, that has holes in it. <laughs> okay, I got cereal. this one. Yeah. I got this one. Um, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to fill up this bar spoon with that scotch right on top of our drink. And then we're just going to sort of slowly layer that around on the top oh. of our drink. We don't want that, uh, Shane, we don't want that to be like part of the drink. We want this to be... Uh, just the smell on top. It's yeah. Uh, it's, a it's a floater. That's what we have. We want this to be a uh, a big old floater. So it's just the smell of this scotch, but then the rest of it is uh, the oh, drink. So it's nice, that's right? Good. I, I mean, I've had like when I like I had friends that used to do um, on Burns Night. Did you ever do a Burns Night? I did. Uh, yeah, the, of course. The poetry. The poet so they Burns. would do like a giant. Um, uh, uh, a scotch tasting and so they would literally be things that would just like this is really good but it the peatiest thing i've ever tasted like it was like licking moss yeah i don't know what it was but this is great i like it yeah well cheers drink um uh shane do you, uh do you first of all i'll ask you do you have a toast that you like to do anything that gets the food booze into my face i will say uh sure uh, let's so, say, uh, um, the time has come, my little ones, to talk of other things, of ships, of shoes, of sealing wax, of cabbages, of kings, why the sea is boiling hot, and whether pigs have wings. Cheers to you, Shane. Let's, cheers uh, do to you. To you, and let's, uh, let's drink. And there you have it. That right there, my friends. Am I not supposed to chug it? Oh, uh, you can chug it if you like. That's, uh, that's completely up to you. Um, that was delicious. Isn't that good? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a I think that's a, a spectacular drink. This um, makes me want to get an STD. Like, <laughs> honestly, a few of those, Shane, and I, I can't stop you. Um, okay, I had we had some questions from the um, from the audience. Uh, let me just say hello to a couple of people. I don't think I said hello to Bon Bon uh, earlier. I might hi, have, bon but bon. if not, I should say hi to Bon Bon. Bon Bon is um, <clears throat> she's the heart and soul of what's going on here. She's uh, one of the nicest. Uh, people of all time. I want to say hello to Alex's life, who is watching us over on um, Twitch. Uh, you guys can't see it, uh, but trust me, he's there. Um, I think that's everybody that's joined and spoken. Um, yeah, people are people are yelling, "Sip it, dude! Sip it!" Um, yeah, don't <laughs> don't, don't go Deal. crazy. Um, just Facebook user said something, so I don't know who Facebook user is. I had a question. We had a question from Bootopia, and I think this is an interesting question, Shane. And I, I'm really kind of um interested to see what your take on it is okay um how do you break into voice like into voice acting how do you break into uh into voice into voice over what's a what's a skill that uh, you would need and then what's a step that you would take <clears throat> it's a very good question and the first thing i will say and i don't i the industry changes very, very quickly, especially now. It, it is, you know, since it was changing fast, but then the pandemic happened and and then it started changing even faster. And with the invention of AI, um, it's changing even faster. So stuff that I'm going to tell you now, while some of it is universal, um, any of the business stuff that I'm might tell you sure could change tomorrow which is very right. frustrating for so many people but the industry is changing there are deals that are going on um that have to do with ai using it not using it and all that stuff but the the basis of everything any good voiceover actor you've ever heard um if you have a favorite if you watched you know ren and stimpy as a kid or pinky in the brain or futurama or doug like any of that stuff the all of the people you hear who are really, really good are at very first good actors. That's the first thing. <clears throat> it, you, you do, you know, you know, anybody that's ever done dance, a lot of them will say like, look, you have to start with ballet because it's how to move and how to stand. And it's very precise. Yeah. Um, the Simpsons. Exactly. So, yeah, Simpsons, you know, yeah. 
Dan Castellaneta, good actor, starts out. Um, uh, um, um, yeah, I mean, uh, Harry Shearer, uh, uh, Hank Azaria, and like, Hank you see Azaria, Hank Azaria, and he is actor. hilarious. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But they're all good actors to start with. Right. So he, I have people come to me all the time and say, like, I don't really care about the uh, uh, NARF. Yes, uh, Ron, uh, um, uh, Ron uh, Paulson. Uh, oh. Rob Paulson, great. Oh, He's man. also in Carcerum. Um, but um, they're all good actors. Maurice LaMarche, also he's the brain. He started out in stand-up comedy doing things, and they're all good actors. So you start Anybody off that... as a good actor. What do you have to add on to being a good actor then? Or is it just that? I mean, that's the first step. The yeah. first step is that. The second step, especially... So I come from theater. My background is theater. Then I went to film and theater. And then to voiceover. Um, uh the difference is, especially, so I've, I've been able to direct some amazing actors from film and TV um, in the voiceover booth. And the thing that I always find with them is that they get very intimidated by the fact that they are in a smaller space with a mm. microphone here. So the right. next thing you do is get comfortable with this microphone and then ignore it. You do the same thing you would do on stage, on film, you know, all those things. So you go from being a good actor to being an actor in a small box with a microphone and get comfortable still being big, still being physical. You know, right. uh, I, I, you know, I, I was in the game um, Starfield that came out recently last year. And, right. you know, if you watch, thank you. If you watch Carcerum, you'll hear this too, but all of the action stuff you do is still physical and big. You get exhausted by the end of it. So again, get comfortable um, doing all of these things in a small space and forget you're in a small space. Yeah. Um, it seems like you need a lot more imagination, right? Like yeah. it, it's one thing like you, okay. So you're, you're in good fellas. They bring you to the bar. You're sitting yeah. in the bar. You got all these Italian waiters are bringing out, you know, uh, Mark Scorsese's people, mother was like cooking people. them. Yeah, and you got them all. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, from what I've seen, a lot of these actors don't even act with other people. You go in and record your own stuff. Like, how do you get over that? How would like very how rarely that... do you walk with you work with other people in the booth? Right. Our serum we did a lot during the pandemic. So, again, we have giant fight scenes, arguments, you know, battles, and none of the people were in the same room. Um, That's crazy it does take a lot of imagination. You have to, while you're on stage, you can actually see the other person and you're playing off of each other's energy and stuff. As a voiceover, you kind of have to imagine that. You know, I go, okay, where am I? What's the environment? All of the choices um, that you're making, you have to make. Um, while, like, again, you know, you're in a bar in, in Goodfellas you get to be in the bar and you go, okay, so this is what the bar looks like. This is what the, where the people are. This is where the person I'm talking to is and all that stuff. You know what the environment is, right? You have to make those choices as a voiceover actor. If you're not yeah. given those circumstances. And even if you are, they'll be like, okay, you're in a bar. Uh, the person's right next to you go. And you're like, okay, so what, you know, you yeah. talk to your friends differently in one bar versus another. Yeah. So I teach, I teach a, a, um, voice uh, a script analysis for the voiceover artist class interesting um, there's one yeah there's one in may but the biggest thing that i try to tell people like this is the entire class i'm about to tell you right now i right. talked about it the first day but it is uh, um realizing what you don't know realizing what is not in the script because it takes a lot if you read a book um you you're like oh well these are the things that you know you see it in your mind but you're you've just made choices that you didn't even realize you made you you just made you know you're reading harry potter you know what their house looks like you know what the the, the cupboard under the stairs looks like right but if you tried to describe that to somebody you'd go oh i well i i just see it um yeah so if you're reading a script, you're not focusing necessarily on what that environment is. So you have to realize what you don't know and make those choices. You have to realize what words in the script you don't know and 
either look those words up or, uh, you know, make a choice on what it means if it's a term that is made up. And that's the big, you know, that's a much, that's, that's a total acting thing anyway, but especially yeah. for the voiceover, you're in a vacuum and you're doing all of this in a vacuum, but in your mind, you're not in a vacuum. Yeah, it's kind of like, uh, you know, when you're acting uh, with, you know, on the screen, uh, I guess it is the difference between the book and the movie. You guys are kind of doing the book. I mean, uh, you're, you're sort of letting somebody like you are, you get to be so imaginative that you then let other, but then you have to sort of give it up and like let other people also imagine that thing. <clears throat> so with Car Serum, which is, again, it's it's a blockbuster movie with no visuals. One of the biggest things that I've been doing audio drama for a long time into arguments with other creators about almost everything. Um, but my my personal opinion, which is correct, um, Always. is that my job is not to get you to see what I see. My job is to get you to see something without trying. So when you read a book, again, you saw what the cupboard under the stairs looked like. And the description right. of it is you know, small cupboard with some cobwebs here and there. But yeah, yeah. it doesn't really tell you what the shape of it is. It doesn't really tell you how big it is. I was just listening to a, a George R. R. Martin uh, interview where he says, nobody on earth has ever drawn the Iron Throne the way that he wants it drawn. So like he has a way and then yeah. everybody else has tried, but nobody, uh, nobody can get it. I think that is, uh, I think that is fascinating. In Carcerum, um, one of my favorite things is we have a horse. We have a mm -hmm. horse. It's a, it's a larger, you know, entity of the thing. Um, and it's people's favorite character. Two things about that that are, amazing to me that i love which is why we did it i got into arguments that you couldn't have a mute character in an audio and i got into fights about this and mm. i was like screw you you can i'll guarantee you because i did the show <laughs> the horse doesn't talk the horse never says a word right. we didn't bring a horse in you know did a you have sorry, mean I, so did did you do the sounds at all yeah, we have sounds of horses, but okay. just because you're mute doesn't mean you don't make sounds. Right. That's one of the things. Yeah. But we put out a, a thing going, what, you know, what's the horse look like? And we got a hundred different answers. We never yeah. describe the horse. And I do that on I did that on purpose. I don't describe a lot of things. Um because your imagination is going to be better than what I come up with. But I am going to take credit for everything that you see. Yeah. So I am just a liar. So it's everybody saw a different horse. And then everybody also didn't understand how everybody didn't see the same horse. And sure. people went back and were like, well, no, no, you definitely described like the color and stuff, which we never did. And it's you, you do that. And that's my job as a creator is not to get you to see the horse I want you to see. It's not important if I tell you what the color of the horse is, if it doesn't matter to the story. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how I feel about audio drama. And, you know, I will say about the question about breaking into voice acting. Right, right. If you yeah. start doing that work about being a better actor, you know, getting, you know, taking classes is great. You'll get some amazing teachers, but all of them are going to tell you in different ways, or they should, the same thing. It's just different ways to do the same thing, which is just play. Don't worry about what you think is the right thing, because there's no such thing as the right thing. And But the one of the biggest things you're going to get out of it is getting in, in a booth, getting in front of a microphone, and then you just eventually just feel comfortable and don't worry about it. Um, don't take a class because you think that person's going to give you a job because then you're just going to be thinking about doing it right and getting a job and impressing the teacher. Right. Get in there, listen to what they say, try it out. If it works for you, great. If it doesn't, you still got into a room in front of a microphone and you just feel more comfortable. It's like driving. I had an acting teacher tell me, you know, uh, acting is like driving a car or playing the piano. When you first start, you're checking your mirrors every single time. You're going here. You know you're doing all of these things. You're clicking your blinker. 
And eventually you just do it without thinking. And that's right. what the point of all of the training is, is to eventually just yeah. do it nor like without thinking. It's like eventually you have to learn all the rules so that you can then break those rules. Like those rules have to be like inside of you yeah. so that you can then say like, I don't even need to think about the rules mm -hmm. anymore. I exactly. can like, let and, me just go. Yeah. And if you break the rule, it's a choice, you know, writing, right. it's the same thing. It's like, look, you do these things. You know, if I make an illegal U-turn while driving, I know it's an illegal U-turn. Right, I've right, made right. that choice to break that rule. But I also know the safe way to do without that. So right. as an actor, you know, every single person watching right now, I will guarantee do a, a check in with your body from your head to your feet. And you're all holding tension somewhere, probably your shoulders or your back or you're not breathing or you're flexing your stomach, all right. of those things. Um, one of you're doing something um, as an actor. I was, you know, taught to recognize those things and then let that go. I hold a lot in my shoulders and this is getting a little bit high end, but like if you're, if you're tensing, you're holding emotion back, you know, it's not letting it flow. And as an actor, you want to let, be able to feel the things and blah, blah, blah. Um, so eventually you can get to the point where your body just relaxes that thing without your mind having to do it. Again, you yeah. practice every day. A soccer player, a basketball player doesn't have to think, okay, this shot, make this angle, follow through. They do right. it without thinking, and that's why they make all the shots, because they can think about what they need to. Yeah, boy. That's, it's, I think... Yeah. I think that's... A, what an interesting uh, uh, perspective. Um, uh, Doug says, the most successful people don't tend to be revolutionary. Uh, they're... They... Don't tend to be revolutionary. They're revolutionary. Don't do something new. Do it differently. Yeah, that's, I mean, listen. Um, I love it. Uh, that's the, I don't, I don't know they if you don't tend heard, to uh, be revolutionary. They are revolutionary. Uh, don't tend to be revolutionary. They're revolutionary. Oh, evolutionary. Oh, there, was oh a Doug there we go. Yeah, Doug, I don't know if you know Doug. Doug uh, was the swabby on a, a very famous ship called the SS Hot Lips. Uh, oh. Very famous, uh, very famous sea pirate, uh, Doug was. So we we love having him in the um that's great. Anything, just anytime. Um, uh, uh, Shane, you and I talked for a long time. I am going to keep we? you guys. I, I know that I have a, I, I, uh, there's a social uh, 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 ten or there's a social construct or a contract that I have with you guys. I'm going to keep you for an hour. I'm going to keep you for just a touch longer. I just want to ask Shane one more question. Um, uh, Shane, um, when you tell people that you are a voiceover artist or when you do, uh, oh, sorry, sh not hot lips, the sugar lips. Right. At the SS Sugar Lips. Um, when you tell people that you are in the voiceover uh, community, that you are uh, a producer and all this stuff and an actor, um, what's the biggest myth that like what's the what's the one question that people get wrong about that where they immediately think, oh, it must be this, um, but it just isn't. Uh, about me or about the whole industry? I, honestly, Shane, uh, I'm going to let you have whichever one you want. Um, so it's interesting because I run a studio here. I've been in games like Fallout. I've been on American Dad. I've, I've done this stuff. And, and your wife is an amazing voiceover actor. She's been in uh, so many games that are just, so she's a legend. Um, I agree. One and the of producer the, of the show. And the producer of that show. So, yeah. you know. Um, people tend to not have a good definition of what success is. Mm. Um, you can have, you can have voiceover actors that you've never heard of or never couldn't pull out of anything that are, you know, successful, um, that, that make money, that do the thing, all that stuff. And you can have voiceover actors in big games or big TV shows or all this stuff that you know, I have people who are going, oh, my God, you run the studio. You know, you, you do all these games. You direct this stuff. You produce these things. Um, you must live, you know, you must know exactly what you're doing. You must make a lot of money and all this stuff. I'm broker than every single person in the <laughs> chat. Like, there's no question. Um, so, there, you know, the, the monetary anything is not, you know, it is not what people expect or the, the version of success 
or or any of that. Um, anybody that if you go to take classes or, or anything and somebody tells you exactly how to do it, what you have to do, you know, this is the way, this is the thing there. Anybody that's overly confident in how to become a success. I'm not talking about like how to get it, being a better actor, how to, you right. know, this, if they say, if you're going to book the job, do it this way. Right. All of it changes every time. Three years ago, three years ago, uh, uh, female, like younger millennial females who had rasp in their voice or five years ago, they were everything. They right. booked all of the, you know, commercials, all this stuff. And now it's a very different sound. They're looking for influencer sounds, which I don't know what that means because there's all kinds of tech to different influencers. Oh, oh yeah, of course. Um, there is no right way to do it. You are just yourself. Um, yeah. It's a very frustrating answer. Um, but that is one of the biggest misnomers about, I think, acting in general, but especially voiceover, where it's like, yeah. oh, my God, I heard you in this thing. You are such a success. And you're like, OK, great. What's your definition of success? Right, Mine right, is right, like, right. I can feed my dog. I, I am, <laughs> you know, I, I, I am known by certain people. But just yeah. being known is not like monetary success. Yeah. Um, I am very happy with my life. I'm very happy with the things I'm doing. And I'm growing as a human being um and constantly growing as an artist and as a creator and right. um never really worried about doing it right because i've been told i was wrong so many times right um so i i have no problem failing um but, i just you know sometimes you'd like to fail quicker than you do just you're like okay i'll move on <laughs> I'll learn and i'll move can on we just, can we just crash we just this place so we can like, get another like, one yeah exactly absolutely. <laughs> um, but that's one of the, the I, I would say that's a a big thing about when people talk to you or like oh my god you know oh my god you know this person they're amazing yeah. they're so successful i'm like they're they're great they haven't yeah. worked in five years because the industry changed right and if yeah. that's your if that's if if money is your version of success they're not that if talent and being happy is your version of success they're right there yeah so yeah. people have to oh. to realize that i love that honestly uh you know doing this show i uh this show does uh uh, and I, I appreciate every one of my patrons and you guys are keeping the show alive. The show doesn't make any money. So, uh, but, uh, but I, this is like the best thing that I've ever done. I've never felt happier doing anything in my life. Like this, this is my happy place. This is where I'm the happiest. And that, you know, you were saying, does anybody actually watch this? Shane, I ask myself the same thing all the time. And then it turns out people do watch this. Yeah. So I feel like I have succeeded in that the same way that, you know, uh, we talk about this in my uh, household a lot when people say like, oh, you're, you know, uh, oh, you're an actor. Yeah, I do voiceover. Oh, would well, you do any like real acting? Uh, oh, my God. Yeah, like, I, I know. I, I know that's triggering. Uh, same no, thing no, no, no. I have some good stories. That's all. Oh, yeah. Tell, tell, give us a story. Give us a story. Absolutely. Well, I, I was out. Uh, I OK, so the other thing that I was um, I was the genie on Disney Cruise Line. I painted myself blue. I sang and danced. Oh I was gosh. the original on the Disney fantasy. Um, right before I went and did that, I was producing a Christmas Carol with Barisa LaMarche and Rob Paulson and Neil Flynn. And, and it did really Pinky well. Pinky in the brain. Pinky in the brain. Uh, yeah. The janitor from Scrubs was in it and other people. Yeah. But I was out with a friend of mine and uh, he just thought it was hilarious to tell, to, to tell people that I was a producer. So we're sitting on like a Wednesday on Hollywood Boulevard, just catching up because I was leaving in a week and a half or something. And he goes, tells to the, 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 the waitress, she goes, oh, what do you guys do? And I was like, oh, he's a musician. He goes, he's a producer. And she's like, oh, really? Oh, okay. And we're talking and I'm talking to her and, and he's talking to somebody and she... And I knew exactly what was about to happen. She goes, so of what course. do you produce? And I go, well, currently I'm producing this audio drama with these guys. She goes, oh, and turns around and walks away. <laughs> like, I'm not looking to like date this person or anything like that. And I knew I was leaving. But it's that kind of feeling of like, you don't do what I think people do or right. are helpful to me. So you don't yeah. matter. Yeah. So I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, what do you do? Cause I'm a bartender. Ready bartend. Well, 
I'm uh, I have a I have a show on YouTube where like yeah. I created my own bar and I'm doing this whole thing where you know anyway yeah it's um uh the the game you f- like yeah you find your say, own version of success yeah what who was on the game show when you did the game show do you remember yeah um uh uh Laura, uh um yes there there was so we have, I mean Marshall we've had Marshall. like yeah. Maurice LaMarche on it, Cameron yeah. Crowe, the, the yeah. uh, Oscar winning director, there, yeah. SpongeBob. We've had all these people. Nobody watches the show. Right. Like nobody. These nobody are watches. very, do very it. famous people. <laughs> we yes. don't do it for people to watch it. We do it because it it it's stupid and it gives us joy during the pandemic. It was like, yeah. okay. Um, but, you know, so it depends on your definition of success. Getting yeah. Cameron Crowe in your game show, is that success? Or is it having a billion people watch it? Or I don't know. I got free it, tacos. It's great. Yeah. Or Doing your show brings you joy. Every day, every day, at, or every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 6 p.m. As I'm turning on the, the, the cameras, as I'm about to push the foot pedal that plays my little thing, do I get a big smile and think, oh, my gosh. How lucky am I that I get to do this? So I think, uh, Shane, yeah. I think your outlook on success is exactly right. That is a very important thing uh, to take away from this. And also, you know, if you can, just chomp a lemon uh, whenever you get a chance with a little honey ginger. I think those when are the two things. When life gives you lemon, add some honey ginger. Uh, somebody said when uh, in the uh, chat, I forget who it was. Somebody said when life gives you lemon, suck on it. So I, yeah. thought, that was, I thought that was great. All right, uh, Shane. Like I said, I have a social contract with my people. I I can't. I they they have do things thing, to do. Man. We have things to do. But um, uh, clearly, Shane, you and I can talk for uh, hours and hours. So we will have you back on uh, as soon as possible. You just let me know um, when you're available. Anytime. And we'll bring you back on. Um, I'm going to run these credits here. Um, if you want, though, you can join me real quick. We're going to do this real quick. Uh, okay. You can join me. At, you can join me and Shane. Uh, Shane, will you stick around for the uh, yeah. for the shot at the end? Okay, great. Um, uh, so you can join me real, join, uh, Shane and I, real quick for the shot after this. The uh, the Fernet's uh, core. Um, I have Fernet tonight. So uh, Shane. Thank you, buddy. I'll bring you right back. Let me just, uh, I don't, you don't need to be on here while I'm uh, pimping the show out. So uh, cheers. And we'll see you in just a second. Uh, Thank you guys so much for watching. Shane will be right back when we do a shot with uh, anybody that wants to join. You can just follow this little link uh, right there. Uh, You can join us and hang out. I see some of you have already joined and I love that. Um, uh, just remember, real quick, guys, that we do these shows any day that has a T in it. Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, we are here at 6 p.m. California time, doing the show, hanging out, opening the bar, inviting people in. Um, and these shows will always remain free, but if you can help out, there's a couple ways to do it. I have a Patreon. You can find it right down there. I also have a Venmo, and I have a PayPal. Those are both great ways to support the show. Uh, really, the your, your uh, continued contributions keep the bar going. It may not seem like it's expensive, but it is kind of expensive to run a bar uh, that uh, doesn't serve drinks. Turns out, that's I think that's crazy. Uh, so if you guys can help out, that's a great way to do it. Uh, if you can't do it that way, I understand. Uh, you know what you can do? I put out videos at least twice a week. I'm trying to get better at it. Um, like those, subscribe those, uh, subscribe to those, share those, hit that bell icon and go. And if you can't do any of that, the best thing you can do is show up. We are live here Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays uh, when we open the bar and bring you guys in so that we can keep this community going. We at this community will continue to define success by enjoying what we are doing, by saying nice things, and by creating a community that is welcoming to everybody. That is how we define success. At least that's how I define success. So uh, let's keep being successful people. Uh, I'm going to run these credits. All these people are my patrons. uh, And then we will come back and we will take a shot. And I do notice that Bon Bon is here. Will she have a new hat? Find out soon at Dr. Cruz's Exotic Drinks. Okay, run these credits, and we'll see you guys in a second. Push the wrong button. Uh, We're going to run these credits, and uh, see you guys in a second.
My father gave me a small loan of a million. Regular human bartender. Yeah! 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 Yippee! Woo! Woo! Yes! All right! Woo! I know. I know. Are you Dr. Jinga Jinga? I know you are, but what am I? I know you are, but what am I? I'm having a party, and you're invited! It's a floater! All right, let's bring Shane right back in here. Good to see you, pal. Let me put everybody up here like this. That's the best way to do it. Okay, uh, first of all, I want to bring in the Swabby of the SS Sugar Lips live and in person. This is Doug right swabby. here. Sorry. The Swabby. There he is, the Swabby of the SS Sugar Lips. Hey, guys, how are you? Good to see you. I'm surprised we don't have a captain's hat for you yet. I don't know. Do they? Do the Swabbies even have hats? I think they should. Uh, uh, we let me get one. Yeah, we're gonna get you. We're, trust me, we're gonna get you one. Don't you worry that. Okay. Now, speaking of hats, Doug and ba uh, Doug and Lulu will Bon Bon have a new hat? Eleven hats is what we're going for. We're going for twelve. Definitely. We're going for yeah. twelve. Here we go. Will she have twelve hats? She's got 12 hats. She's got 12 hats. She, Bon Bon has come in on theme, oh on theme with the, uh, with the uh, Mickey Mouse ears for Take Your Bartender to Disneyland Day, <laughs> the 60th anniversary. I love it. Now, Bootopia is here, but Bootopia, it does not have a screen thing. So I'm bringing in Bootopia audio only. Trust me, Bootopia. Oh, there he is. Ah, there's Bootopia. Also, with a hat, we are all here. Butopia, uh, did you make the drink? Hey. Butopia's, uh, yeah. There he is. Anyway, uh, <laughs> listen, I'm, I'm gonna put me back over here. Just uh, that's what it is. Uh, listen, guys, um, I'm loving it. Uh, Doug, so excited to uh, so excited to learn all about your sugar lip stuff. We're gonna have to get deep into. We're gonna it. have Probably a lot of talk about that. Yeah, we're gonna, honestly we're gonna have we're gonna bring you on to uh, the show because we I really got to hear all about it. I think that's important for us uh -oh. to learn every little bit about it. Um, cool. Uh, 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 Butopia, can you can you can you hear us now? Can you talk? No. Okay. Nope. Butopia's <laughs> typing. Uh, Butopia did say, I love your stuff, Shane. Uh, Thank it's the most you. of the ocean and not the size of the ship. I think that's important for us all to learn. <laughs> Cheers, Butopia. Butopia just dropping pearls of wisdom on us currently. I just uh, love the I idea say. that there's somebody out there with a massive yacht on a placid lake. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, that uh, that describes the exact opposite of my life. Uh, yeah, we're gonna drop. We are gonna drop uh, Utopia here. Okay, uh, I think we're getting some feedback. From, oh, we're getting feedback from somebody else. Oh, we were getting feedback from the Greens, from the from the Swabby. So the Greens, I'm gonna put you on here, but I'm gonna mute you. There we go. Okay, cut. Okay, guys. Uh, well, anyway, uh, let's take our shot. This is a shot. Uh, Shane, whatever you got left, uh, you can take that shot with us. Oh, I will. We call this the fern core, the fernet core. Uh, we just like to pour a little fernet 
into it. We like to uh, cheers. Is that the what end. we drank at that birthday? Yes, exactly. That almost that killed everybody. Terrible. Yes. yes, I know. Nobody likes it. <laughs> Nobody likes it. All right. Um, uh, do not carve in stone or wood. He was honest or he was good. Instead, write in smoke on a passing breeze. Seven words. And the words are these that say all that a volume could. He loved, he laughed, and he understood. <laughs> Cheers to you all. Cheers. Mm. We've done it. All right, guys. Um, well, Doug, can't wait to talk to you guys more about being uh, about the, the Swabby and the Sugar Lips. I feel like this is a really fun new bit that we're doing. And if you hate it, I'm sorry, I can't stop. It's all I can think about. So cheers to you guys. And I will see you guys in uh, less than a month at Arizona, in Arizona at the Tiki Oasis. Yeah. Uh, bon Bon, same thing with you. We're going to see you here real soon at the Tiki Oasis in Arizona. Bring your hats. I think that's important uh, to all of us. Um, oh, I dropped Shane and not Bon Bon. Uh, yeah, uh, Bon Bon, bring hats. Because uh, we're going to have a party. And uh, Shane, buddy, thank you for doing this. We're going to have you on again. It's just such a nice, it's so nice to this chat with you. This was best day of the month. Oh, good. All right. And, yeah, gosh, and we're almost over too. So we don't have many more days to beat. So I think that's important. Um, cheers to you, pal. And uh, we'll see, I'll see you on Tuesday for karaoke. <laughs> Always a pleasure. Never a chore. That was a lot of fun, guys. Thank you so much to my very good friend, Shane. Uh, thank you to everybody uh, that's uh, joined. Thank you to all of you uh, that continue to show up, that uh, continues to make me feel like a gargantuan success. Uh, that, is, uh, that is on you guys, and I really appreciate it. So uh, until we meet again, what do we always say? As we uh, as we walk down that dusty road, we look each other deep into the eyes, and we say goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, let me try that again. Let me do that more, real, more dramatically. What do we always say? 